Hello, my name is Arun Srinivasa and I'm here to help you learn engineering mechanics and its use in structural design. Okay, following uh, beam procedures and uh, we are now going to discuss how to solve beam equilibrium example, uh, second problem. So I will show you, I already did one problem, I'm going to show you the second one. And I'm going to show you how different boundary conditions, including concentrated moments are dealt with and more about diagnostics. So this is important enough so that uh, we can see what is the effect of diagnostics. Uh, prerequisite for this, if you have not already done so, you should watch the previous beam, beam lectures from me so that you can understand the notation and procedure. I am only going to show how to use the procedure here. Okay, now let's look at a sample problem. Uh, so we have a cantilever beam. Can you see one end is fixed and the other end has a, there's a force at, of 10 kN at one meter from the end and a, and a clockwise torque of five kN meters at the end of the beam. So we're gonna solve this problem. This is a fairly simple one, but the idea is to illustrate the procedure to make sure you all follow how this is worked out. So remember, the four equations that we need to solve. And I know I'm writing it in integral form rather than differential form. They're both the same, but the integral form is more convenient for ourselves. So the first one is force equilibrium, which says Vy equals minus integral of Py dx, where Py is the external force in the y direction. And Vy past the end equal to zero, past the very end of the beam. Okay, this is force equilibrium. Moment equilibrium is mz equals minus integral of vy plus cz dx. And mz past the very end equal to zero. This is moment equilibrium. Then we come to constitutive relation, which tells you how the moments are related to the curvature. Theta z equals integral of mz over ei dx plus a1, which is a constant of integration. Notice that in the first two, there are no constants of integration. The last one is kinematics, which tells you how the curvature is related to the displacement. Uy equals integral of theta z dx plus a2. These are the four equations that we have to solve. Okay, let's get to it. Starting point is that, uh, you know, before we go there, I just want to mention that the reaction forces in the beam and moments and the two constants of integration are determined by global equilibrium conditions and the constraints on the beam due to the joints. In this particular case, there is a welded or fixed joint at, a, at x equal to zero. And I will show you how those things uh, get done. So we start out, step one, you have to draw a free body diagram for this. So my free body diagram looks like this. You can see that um, there is a force R1 at x equal to zero pointing upwards and a counterclockwise moment of C1 at x equal to zero. Uh, the other external forces are already shown. This is my free body diagram. When I draw the unknown forces and so on, I will just automatically assume to be in the same direction as allowed by the global axis. Notice at the fixed end, both displacement and rotation are constrained. That is, I know Uy equal to zero, theta z equal to zero. It says theta y, that's not correct. It's theta z equal to zero. So the effects are known there already, displacement and rotation. Hence the causes R1 and C1 cannot have pre-specified values. You, you don't know what is R1, you don't know what is C1 because effects are known there. They are the reaction loads and we must find them from the beam equilibrium equations. But we have to list them in the free body diagram because they exist. If I don't put them there, the assumption is R1 is zero, C1 is zero, which is not correct. Step two, take this free body diagram and convert it into singularity functions. This is something that only you can do. No computer program can do it. So please remember that only you can do this. Okay, so if I do that, I'm first going to talk about forces, forces in the y direction. So there's R1 at x equal to zero. There's 10 kN uh, pointing downwards at x equal to one. So that is why I have two forces. They are both concentrated loads. Remember, I talked to you about like knife edge. So they are both con concentrated loads. R1 and 10 are not the height of the spike. They are the area under the spike. So remember that, okay? 
um, CZ of X, which is all the couples on the body. First one, there is a couple C1 going counterclockwise at X equal to zero. So that is C1 X to the X minus one. And there's a clockwise couple of five at X equal to two. So I add those two things. So PY of X, CZ of X are done. So step two is over. These two steps are critical and they require your judgment. And only you can do it. These are the two steps that only you can do. After that, you can get computers to do all kinds of things for you. But these two steps, only you have to do. Okay, step three, A, integrate the force and moment balance equations. Now it's a simple procedure. Okay, there's nothing to think about. You just go bang, bang, bang. It's just four integrations. So first two is integrate force and moment balance. So substitute for PY and integrate. VY equal to integral, negative integral of PY dx. Substitute for PY and you'll get VY equals minus of R1 times bracket X to the power zero plus 10 times bracket X minus one to the power zero. So there is no integration constant here. MZ equals minus of integral of VY plus CZ. So substitute the VY, be careful about the negative signs uh, and make sure you keep track of them. And substitute for CZ, you remember we got CZ just in the previous slide. So in, substitute those two things, integrate and you will get something very simple. MZ equal to R1 bracket X to the power one minus 10 times bracket of X minus one to the power one minus C1 bracket X to the zero plus five times X minus two bracket to the power zero. So the first two terms come from VY, the second two terms come from CZ. So these two terms are from the integral of VY and these two terms are from the integral of CZ. Right, now we integrate the next two ones, constitutive relations and kinematics. So since EI is constant, constant, we will solve for EI theta Z and EI UZ. This is much more convenient. So whenever EI is constant, we will try to do that. EI theta Z is integral of MZ dx plus A1. Remember this A1 is not the same because we multiplied by EI, but it's some constant, we don't care what it is. Uh, EI theta Z equals, so then substitute for MZ. So here is MZ, take that. Substitute here and integrate and you will get R1 over two X squared minus five X minus one to the power one minus C1 X, X to the power one plus five X minus two to the power one plus A1. So this is the constant of integration. Do the next one, EI theta Y. Integrate again, EI UI equals integral of EI theta Z dy plus A2. So take this EI theta Z Substitute and integrate again, and you'll get R1 over six X cube minus five over two X minus one squared minus C1 over two X squared plus five over two X minus two squared plus A1 X plus A2. Step three A and three B are easy but tedious. This is a simple procedure. Substitute the previous function with proper sign and integrate again and again and again. The idea for the signs you might be, it might be slightly different than what you are used to in your previous class the reason is because i want to keep it so that uh, the values are just determined by the global axis so you don't have to think whether it, which way is positive which way is negative it's it's always global axis decides which which directions are positive and negative okay now that we have we have four unknown constants R1, C1, A1, A2. The first two unknown constants are reaction forces and, and moments. The second two unknown constants are from the displacements and uh, rotation. So now we do global equilibrium and connection constraints. Global equilibrium says U Vy at x equal to two plus. So what the heck is a plus here? Can you see this plus? So what the heck is that? That tells me that you have to evaluate it just past the end. Don't evaluate it just before the end, go past the end. This matters for step functions, so be careful about that, okay? So we, Vy x equal to two plus gives me zero. So evaluate it just past the end. I will get one term from here, R1, another term from here, 10. So I get minus R1 plus 10 equal to zero. 
Um, and then I do the same thing for the next one. And then uh, we integrate it and solve it. By the way, just to make sure, this should be a minus 10. You can see that there's a minus 10. I made a mistake, sign mistake here. That should be a minus 10. Okay, so solve for it. You'll get a2 equal to zero, a1 equal to zero. This is just algebra, four equations, four unknowns. In this particular case, it solves two by two, so it's pretty easy. So I'm not wasting time showing you how to do the algebra. I am expecting that you know how to solve the algebra by substituting these values. Okay, where did I get these two? This is force equilibrium for the whole beam, moment equilibrium for the whole beam. That's the first two equations. The second two equations are boundary condition at x equal to zero. Ui equal to zero, theta z equal to zero. Okay, so then you can solve it and you'll get R1 equal to 10 kilonewtons, C1 equal to 15 kilonewton meters. My suggestion to you is stop and make sure you can do this particular problem all by yourself. Okay, don't just take my word for it. That is how you will learn what the steps are. Okay, once you are able to do the problem, then you will see where I got the constants and how I got these values and all of that. You have to struggle it and do. So my suggestion to you is pause the video, go do it yourself and see if you can get this, okay? So once you're done, the mathematical procedure is over. And you can see it's a very straightforward, fixed procedure. But the real task for you as an engineer starts now because you have to first interpret what the heck has happened. What does this mean? So this is where we go. We have gone to the virtual or symbolic world. Now we got to come back to the real world. Okay, so here was the problem. So first let us look at the shear force. And you can plot the shear force diagram. You can see that shear force was minus 10 kilonewtons all the way until the concentrated force came. Then it jumped up and went. So that was this singularity function. If you plot it, you will see that makes sense. You can do the same thing for the bending moment diagram. We got the bending moment. You can plot it. You can see linearly varying bending moment from minus 15 or something. Then it goes constant and comes down. By the way, these two diagrams, I drew it using Python. You can do that with, with Excel also. It's not a problem, okay? Uh, but I like Python and I wanted to, I, and I wanted to uh, get the nice grid and all that. So that's why I did it in Python. Uh, theta Z is this kind of function, okay? You can see steadily decreases, starts at zero and steadily decreases. And EIY, which is the displacement looks like this. By the way, this is EI Theta Z, not Theta Z. So this is EI Theta Z, you can see that here. So EIY is this expression which we got and we plotted it and it looks like a beam that is bending downwards. Now the question is, how do I know this, whether this is correct or not? Okay, magically the singularity function says all these things. Should, is this correct? So then you can use this information to say where is the bending moment highest and all of that. That's the next level of decision making. So at this level, we are just trying to see if these numbers are correct. So off we go and we take a look and we may have to make some estimations. So that's where we are headed next. Okay, first thing is to do general shapes. First thing is beam bends down and sort of frowns. That is it should curve downwards. Let's see if that's true or not. Would you agree? Because I'm applying loads on it, right? So it has to curve downwards. Then second thing is there, there should be zero displacement and rotation at x equal to zero. Is that correct or not? We have to see that. Since curvature is negative, moment must be negative. Remember, moment is proportional to curvature. So since it's curving down, moment must be negative. The last item is shear force must jump at places of concentrated load. So let's see if those things are true. Um, Okay, first item, notice that my displacement looks curved downwards. That's fine, so that's okay. Notice that initial displacement is zero, initial slope is zero, so that is okay. My moments are all negative because this is all curving downwards, so moments are all negative. And then shear force is jumping at the places where there's concentrated load. There was one concentrated load and the shear force is jumping there. 
so all these things are fine so this is general idea now we look at quantitative things shear forces must be roughly the same order of magnitude as the average of the applied forces so you take if you get a rough idea so if you look at it our applied force is 10 kN so shear forces are they the same magnitude yes that's about minus 10 so we are okay bending moments must be approximately the average moment of the forces in this particular case i have a load at 10 which is at a distance of 1 another at 5 so it should be in the order of 15 kN so let's see kN meters so let's see if that's true yeah that's roughly correct Okay, so it's in the same order of magnitude. Doesn't mean it, in this particular case it happens to be exactly 15 kilonewton meters. What it is is that you have to make sure it's approximately of the same order of magnitude. Then EI times the deflection should be roughly PL cubed. You remember deflections of a beam should be PL cubed over EI type of thing. So in our case, it should roughly be PL cubed. So that gives me 10 times one cubed that's the length of the place where the force is being applied so it should roughly be uh, 10. let's see if that's true yeah it's about 20 it's not 10 but at least the same order of magnitude it's not a hundred or a thousand okay so we are roughly in the correct order of magnitude for the deflection is remember this is not an exact answer this is a rough check okay so now we have done the checking so we are going to do a quick summary which says that the deflections of any straight beam with distributed loads can be obtained by a fixed procedure as four integrals using singularity functions. All you have to do is convert the free body diagram into singularity function, not similarity. It should, it should have said singularity functions and it requires some judgment and engineering common sense. This cannot be done by computer. This is where your value added is uh, is there. This is where you earn your value as an engineer. Okay, that's why we emphasize these things very carefully. The singularity functions will allow you to treat even concentrated forces or moments as being the same as distributed loads. The reaction forces and the two constants of integrations can be obtained by using the boundary conditions. The conditions on the beam need to be such that only one pair of conjugate variables can be specified at any cross section. Either displacement or force, either rotation or moment. So pick one of the pair. When applying boundary conditions for the shear force or bending moment, care should be taken to go just past the boundary. At the right end, when we say end, we mean just past the end so that we count all the things. So that step functions are carefully accounted for. If EI is constant, it is much simpler to find EI theta and EI UI, not Y, EI UI, so that the scaled solution can be found without any material data. This is a huge advantage so that we can see the effect of different materials easily. Typically, E times I is a very large value. So what happens when you divide it is that the displacements and everything will be very small. Rough shape and order of magnitude tests are extremely useful to provide a quick check of the answer. At least you have to see if they have the same number of digits. Okay, so this is how this procedure works. Test your understanding. Now it's time for quiz. Can you list the four equations for solution of a planar straight beam? Can you describe the four steps in solving a beam problem? Under what conditions are we allowed to do EI times theta Z and EI times UZ? How do we estimate shear force, bending moment, slope, and displacement so that we can verify correctness? If you can answer these and apply the procedure for your own beam problems, we are done with this section. Thank you very much.